friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Heidi Sambel, let's get crafting. To get started, you're gonna take a miter box, your painter sticks, and a little hand saw. And I'm gonna just cut off three inches from the tops of the paint stirrer stick. And this is because I'm gonna be using the smaller sticks for my green basket. Once I get those all cut off, I'm gonna go ahead and just sand them down so that the edges are nice and smooth. Now I cut about 30 of these for my round basket. I think I might have done like between 30 and 35 because I wanted to have some extra on hand. And then I went ahead and picked out a really pretty green color and I was debating between green and a light teal color because I love the idea of doing green because I could use it for Christmas too. So I went ahead and decided to go with green. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just lightly brush these painter sticks. I don't wanna have too much paint on here because I want it to have that weathered look. And the cool thing about these painter sticks is that they actually absorb the paint so you can still see the wood grain coming through. And I really love the way that looks just overall. I think it looks really pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and just plow through all of these sticks and I'm not gonna just paint one side, I'm gonna paint the back and the front of them because I wanna make sure that when you're looking at the basket you still see the color on the inside. So here I am once they've all dried, I'm just gonna flip them over and then paint the other side. And like I've shown from before, I'm not painting the whole thing fully, I'm just doing rough brushes on this so that it gives it that paint feel but there's still a lot of splotchy spots. Now on the white it really absorbs a lot into the painter sticks so I'm just going down only the middle of those white painter sticks and just giving one more little coat of white paint and then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. But can you see how the wood is coming through? It's These are like the greatest things to paint with like farmhouse decor because it sucks in the paint and it leaves that wood grain still. So I'm curious to stain these and try this for another project with like wood stain. I think it could be really pretty to stain them. Now what I'm gonna do is I found this wreath at the Dollar Tree and there are four circles on it. I've already cut it apart. Here you see me cutting apart the last two. And you're just gonna take wire cutters and with some pressure, it's not too bad, but as you're cutting through all four rings, your hand can start to hurt a little bit. So maybe just take a break or get someone who has a stronger hand than you to cut this. But you're just gonna cut off all of these little jump divider rings that are in between the big circles because you want them all to be separate. So one of these wreaths from the Dollar Tree actually works for two baskets and you're gonna need two rings for each basket. The two small inner circles are for the white basket and the outer bigger circles are for the green basket. Then once I'm all done cutting those apart, I'm gonna lay them down on foam cord board and I'm going to trace the circle of the smaller of the set. So if I'm doing the tall white basket, I'm taking the smaller most inner circle and I'm going to trace that around for the base of, because it gives you basically the sides that you need for the base of your basket. And then for the other basket, the green basket, you're going to do the outer circle of the wreath. I hope that makes sense. Then once you get it all cut out, you're going to stack those two on top of each other because remember you need two circles for your base so it's really strong. You're going to just glue those together. And then once you get those together and nice and firm, you're going to go ahead and take your ring and you're going to lay it back on top and see how it fits like it's the perfect size but it's a little too snug if you're going to put those painter sticks between the two to glue them together so i'm going to just shave off a little bit around you don't want it to be too much because then the band won't be as tight around the wood sticks and this is what's going to make this basket super sturdy so i've cut just a little bit around so you can see that you know there's going to be room for me to be able to put these painter sticks all the way around the basket now, once I'm all done doing that, I'm gonna take those circles because I've got my measurement right and I'm just gonna use this drop cloth that it's a painter's drop cloth and I'm going to hot glue it on both sides. So I'm gonna glue it on one side and glue it on the other. And as you cut the, the drop cloth, it can pull and shrink a little. So you're just gonna have to stretch it when you're gluing it down. Now this next one is a little more time consuming out of all the things that you're gonna do for this basket. It's just you having to take long strips of twine and you're gonna wrap it around the metal ring. Now you can skip this part, but I will tell you that this makes it look so much 
it's just higher quality and it looks like it's store bought and it doesn't take that long just put on a movie and you're going to hot glue it to it and keep wrapping it around now the next step this is really important friends you're going to take your painter stick and you're going to lay them out almost like a sunburst because you want to see how many sticks you're going to need to be able to reach all the way around the basket this is going to allow you to be able to know your spacing and just so you don't have any like weird gaps and big holes on certain sides of your basket and then once you do you're just going to stand them up and glue them to the foam cord board now because you doubled up the foam cord board on the bottom it's going to allow you to be able to have a bigger surface to hot glue these sticks to so as i'm working my way around i'm just making sure they're glued on really well i'm giving a nice amount of hot glue on it and i'm just putting them all on because I wanted to be able to shift around those last ones to make sure that the spacing in between them looks good and it doesn't look, you know, kind of a mistake. All you have to do is just pull off some of them and this is why I made a couple extra. So once I get all of those glued in, I'm gonna take that ring that I've wrapped in twine and I'm gonna go ahead and just push it down to the bottom. Now this should be a snug fit, which is really good. That's what you want. You want it to be nice and snug so it stays in place and then it makes this basket surprisingly really sturdy. Then I'm gonna just take my hot glue and I'm gonna put some hot glue around underneath the ring and I'm gonna slide it down so it's really tight in place. And once that ring is all done, I'm then going to take the larger ring. Now this is, when you're looking at the ring going from the outside in, it's the second one in on that metal wreath. So you can tell that it's wider and it's not as wide as my basket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on one side and pull one out and glue it, go on the opposite side, pull out another one, go on the, and then the opposite side. So just think north, west, south, east. You're pulling out all those opposites and then you're going to start gluing in all those middle sections. Make sure you hold them in place for about 10 to 20 seconds each, that way so that they really dry before you try to move on to another stick because otherwise they keep popping off. So once you've got that all done, to make it the strongest you can make it, you're going to take another piece of twine and I like to wrap it around my basket twice to make sure I have the length right because you want this to be one continuous piece of twine so that you don't have to cut and make it you know, weaker, it's stronger when it's one piece. So I'm going to go behind the painter stick, put a dot of glue, go under the wire and repeat that. Okay, and then the finishing touch, I just took two pieces of twine the same length and I tied a simple bow and then I'm going to find the prettiest side of the basket that I like and I'm just going to hot glue that bow on. Yes, you could skip the bow, but I just think the bow just adds a little something extra and then you're just going to cut off the twine and there you have it, a cute farmhouse basket. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button because I have new videos that come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and they are always packed full of fun ideas. I'm going to be taking this item I found from Habitat of Humanity and I got it for 10 bucks. Now I think this thing is called a newel. I'm not exactly sure, but it was used at the end, the bottom of a staircase. I have been eyeing these for a while, wanting to turn them into something special and they are so expensive. So I found this one for $10. These normally run anywhere between 80 to 150 dollars so first i sanded it down lightly you don't want to sand too much off because it's going to cause it to bleed since the stain is so dark when i paint it white so i went ahead and painted the whole thing white and before i painted you saw earlier that i took the paintbrush and just before I put any paint on it, dusted it all off and made sure I cleaned the surface because you don't want that to pick up on your paintbrush when you're painting. So once you've cleaned all your surface off, you can go ahead and start painting the whole thing white. I did three coats of white paint. 
Once I had coated it enough and I liked the finish on it, I took some sandpaper and then I just roughed up the edges to give it that farmhouse look that I love so much. And I just went wherever the corner surfaces were. You kind of can naturally find them when you're going over your surfaces. The sandpaper will hit it without any problems. And if you happen to take off too much that you don't like, you can always go back and add some more white paint. Then when I was done doing that, I went ahead and added a hook so that I can hang up a wreath or signs however I want to decorate with it. For our next DIY, this one is so easy, you all. I cannot wait for you to see how easy this is. Take a can or two, some fabric that you love, some florals from the Dollar Tree, and a foam square. Start by using white paint and putting it all over the corrugated metal that you see in the middle of these cans. We're not worrying about painting the top or the bottom because we're gonna be doing something with that later, but just right around where that bumpy part is. Once it's dry, you're then going to take some sandpaper and you are going to sand over it so that you have that corrugated metal look to it, which is really, really pretty when it's all done and sanded down just like how I'm doing here. So go over the whole surface and then put it off to the side because next we're going to be using our gingham fabric that I have here. Again, I got this from Joann's with a coupon. I always use coupons when I go to stores. I love coupons. I love getting things on a budget. So go ahead and cut a little snip and then just rip all the way down so that you have a nice strip to work with. And then put that to the side for just a second and get some twine and you're going to just wrap it around the bottom. Remember how I said earlier we don't need to paint the bottom because we're gonna be adding something. Well, we're adding this twine to the bottom. Snip off what you don't want for the extra strings because we don't, that'll be the back side. Then you're gonna take your fabric, you're gonna fold it in half, and you are just gonna wrap it around the top where the seam is towards the back, just the same place where you tied that knot earlier. Have those be towards the back. And then you're just gonna flip it over, hot glue it down into place. And then, once you've got some foam inside of your cans and glued in place, you are going to add in your florals. Now, I said this earlier, I like to cut off my flowers from their stems just because I feel like you can play with them more and they look more lifelike versus keeping them on that weird plastic piece that keeps them all bundled together. I just am such a big fan of cutting them loose and then putting them in at the height or the look that I want. So once you've got your cans all filled in with these beautiful, beautiful purple flowers, you're then going to take some more twine and add that to where the gingham fabric is. And we're just gonna put a little hot glue, wrap around twice. To finish the look, we're gonna add a simple bow and hot glue it into place. Now you're gonna need three different fabrics and some twine. And the twine, what you're gonna do, you're gonna take it out to your front door and you're gonna measure it from the ground going up around the top of your door and back down on the side. Now you can make it shorter if you would like, but that's about how long I made mine. I wanted mine to be really long and dramatic. Next, you're gonna take your fabric, create a little snip at the top and following along with the weave of the fabric, you're gonna just pull straight down. You're gonna know right away if you are pulling it the right way because one will easily rip versus the other will be a little too hard to rip apart. So once you have that figured out, you just get going. Keep making snips and rip all the way down until you get all the way through your fabric. Now I'm using about a yard and a half for each of the black and the gingham and then for that other fabric that's tan, that's actually a drop cloth, I'm using a little bit more. I'm using about two and a half yards for that because that fabric is super cheap and affordable if you buy it from a home improvement store. And again, it's just painter's drop cloth. So once you get those strips all done, you can cut one solely by itself, but it'll take much longer doing this. So I like to double up or 
triple up I'm actually holding about five pieces of fabric and I just cut them all really quick creating about four inches wide of these strips once you get those strips all figured out you're then going to take one of the little strips and tie it on to the twine now I moved up about two inches from the end because I want to be able to have a clean ending on this banner so I'm going to just do a little double knot real simple no big deal once you've got that tied I'm going to take the end of it because otherwise you'll see it sticking out I'm going to pull it down so it's laying flat onto the long twine that I'm going to be tying everything to and then I'm going to take another piece of fabric and I'm going to just tie it right over it this is going to give it a nice finished look plus it's going to keep it from having these knotted pieces of fabric sliding off over time and it'll keep everything in place looking really good for years to come Once you've got the end figure out, you're then going to just continue on with your pattern. So I'm going to go with gingham, black, burlap, and you can just see that I laid them out there in that order. That way it helps me continue on in the pattern and I can grab things quickly. And as you tie them on, you're going to just kind of twist them opposite from each other when you're pushing them down. You don't want them to all be sliding down to the bottom in the same direction because then it'll just be flat. What makes this banner really cute is that it's full and really poofy and I just enjoy it so much more like that. And here is the finished look on my front door. And now we're gonna be moving on to our next project. I am super excited about sharing this one. I love these in my home and I have had so many people asking me about them and where I bought them. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to make one. Today we're gonna to be making a sign that you can hang up in your hallway in front of a bathroom or a kitchen, wherever you would like it to be. So you're gonna take this oval wood plaque that you can get at the Dollar Tree. All of these supplies, by the way, are coming from the Dollar Tree, just like normal here on my channel. You're gonna take off those staples and that twine at the back, and then using a drill, you're gonna drill in two holes. Once you've got two holes drilled, you're gonna go ahead and paint your sign white or whatever color you would like it to be. Then we're gonna take this chain that they have also at the Dollar Tree and we're gonna take it apart. It's in their garden section and we're gonna take one of these hanging plant hooks and we're gonna just take it all apart and make it work so that we can hang up our cute little wood sign onto it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just measuring out my chain and how long I want it to be and then I'm going to just undo the hooks, the loops that are there and I'm going to get the desired length that I want and I'm also going to take that hook at the end and reverse it to the other side. That's just because I felt like the chain was put on backwards. I don't know maybe I'm wrong but this is just how I decided to do it I reversed it to the other side so I'm gonna make sure both sides are the same length you don't want one to be longer than the other because otherwise your sign is going to be hanging crooked and then once you've got that length that you want you're just gonna wrap it around take that hook that you have that's open feed it onto the chain on the other side and then close it and then add on those hooks at the end now we're going to put that to the side for a second and we're going to move on to our sign. We're going to go ahead and use those really cute letters that they have at the Dollar Tree and you're just going to stick them right on. Now I've decided to do the sign bath, but again you can put whatever you want, laundry room, kitchen, whatever you want, office, it could just be so darling doing this and again this was super cost efficient the one that i have that is hanging up in my hallway i will link that video down below where i show that sign 
that sign cost me 26 bucks this is going to cost me only four bucks to make so it really is cost efficient so once you've got your letters on go ahead and take some mod podge and just seal them in so they do not come off because sometimes these letter stickers can peel off and then once that mod podge is dry you're going to open up those hooks at the bottom you're going to feed on your sign bend them back into place and then make sure everything is nice and straight and to keep the chains from sliding around i used some e6000 that really locked them into place i do recommend screwing into the wall first and then doing the e6000 And if you didn't know, I am also on Instagram. Come on by and say hi to me. I'm under the name Heidi Sambol. You can also find me on Facebook too. If you don't have Instagram, it's a really great place to connect with me more personally, one-on-one, -on -one, because we're able to have those private chats. So if you're interested, come say hi to me. I cannot wait to get to know you over there and to see what kind of crafts you are personally up to. Now this project is a little more advanced, but it is super affordable. My total supplies and materials were about $4.25, I believe. So what you're gonna need are longer painter sticks and three picket fence posts. So you're gonna lay them out next to each other, take those painter sticks, lie them on top, and figure out where you need your cut lines for your painter sticks. Then using a little miter saw and a box to cut in, you're going to go ahead and make those cut. Once you have those cut all out, you're ready to paint. Now I love orange, so I'm going to paint one side orange and I'm going to lessen it because I just like more of a sherbet type orange, like a creamy orange. So once I've got the color all right, I'm gonna go ahead and paint with a thick brush. It helps it go on much easier and paint all three of those posts as well as the painter stick. Now you don't need to paint the backside because the backside is going to be a different color. Now before I move on to screwing them together, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to paint the back side white. Now this is because, like I said, this is going to be a double sided project. So go ahead and give a nice thick coat of white paint. You can whitewash this, that could be really pretty too, but I was going for a nice white look. I'm also going to be painting the sides because I want the sides to be white since you'll be seeing that more primarily throughout the year. And then I'm going to paint two more of those painter sticks that I cut down to size. Once everything has been painted and dried, I'm ready to go ahead and assemble it together. You can figure out the alignment that you would like, how far apart you want the width to be on these. I wanted mine to have a little bit of a spacing between them, that way so it looks, you know, a little more shiplappy, <laughs> I guess is what I'm looking for. But you can also put them really close, it's just your desire of how close or far apart you want. And since I'm going to be putting letters on mine, I wanted them to be a little bit closer. So using a drill, it really helps cut down on splitting those painter sticks. You're going to go ahead and just drill out three holes for the orange side, drill in some screws that are long enough that won't go all the way through, and then use some paint to cover up where those screws were. You could show the screws if you want that look, but I didn't personally. Now not everybody has a Cricut or a Silhouette, and I wanted you guys to see that you don't have to only use vinyl. And I know that a lot of people are really afraid of doing hand painted letters. So I'm going to show you today that all you have to do is print out your letters on a printer, cut out the letters and trace them on. At that point, it becomes like a coloring book. And all you have to do is color inside of the lines and go just a little bit over onto the pencil line to hide those pencil lines. And you look like you are really good at painting letters. You can do this with any font you want. That's the best part about it. As long as you have the font where it can be printed on your programs on your computer, it will be able to allow you to use different fonts. 
Now my trick with painting by hand is to put on some music. There is something so therapeutic about painting by hand and having music playing at the same time. It really helps you unwind and de-stress, at least it does for me. Once you get your letters all painted on, they are going to look so cute popping on this orange background and you're ready to flip it over and to work on the white side. Now this is the reason why I'm saying it's a double sided welcome sign because you can use the orange side for fall and you can use the white side for all the other months and we're going to be using black letters. And I want you to imagine you can do whatever colors you want for this, it's just so cute all year round. Now you're going to use your other two painter white stick and instead of lining them up back to back with the orange side, you're going to bump them a little bit higher. You're going to drill two holes this time. This is going to make this sign super sturdy having screws being on the orange side and the white side. And the reason why you're going to go higher than the orange side's painter stick is because you want to be able to make sure they don't bump into screws. Make sure your screws aren't too long. Now the drill really is helpful. As you can see here on the bottom, I did not drill holes like I did the top and I wanted you to see that if it does crack, you can either use some paint to fill in that, those cracks or you can use some wood putty and then paint over it. But I just used paint. I wanted you guys to see that if you don't have a drill, no worries, you just fill in those cracks. You're gonna go ahead and just trace on your letters once again that you cut out for the orange side trace them all down and then I used black paint. I really liked the way the black and the white looked together. I thought it looked really crisp and clean and it will go well with any home decor. Again, just slow down, take your time and paint inside the lines and a little bit over onto the pencil line to make sure you don't see the pencil line to give it a nice finished look. And this is so affordable because you can get a bottle of paint and just use the tiniest amount for about a dollar is the bottle of paint and painting on the letter I mean saves you so much money vinyl can be really expensive and here is the completed look now if you notice at the top of the picket fence it is the cutest little notches to be able to put in a ribbon so I added a ribbon to the top of my sign to give it a nice look Friends, I have some super exciting news, things that I'm excited and also nervous to share. I have started a new channel. I have decided to take all of my home type theme videos and move them over to Heidi Sambel Home. I'm gonna link that down below and at the end of this description box. I would love it if you went over and checked it out. I just started talking about the room of the month, so go check it out over there on that channel. The next project we're gonna be working on are with these lavender floral stems from the Dollar Tree, this wreath. And this is a super simple project. A couple of these projects today I'm making are gonna be really simple for beginners and crafting. I know there are a lot of you out there who are interested in getting started and sometimes the bigger, harder projects can be overwhelming and no one wants to start with a Pinterest fail. So I just want you all to know that I'm gonna always show some easier projects, some harder projects, and this is one of the ones where I feel like a lot of people can try it. It's just a little trial and error and keep playing with it until you like it. So what I'm doing is without cutting off the florals from those plastic stems like I normally would do in my videos, this time I'm going to just curve that bottom wire and I'm going to put a little hot glue, stick it into place and then take some twine and I'm going to just keep wrapping it around and around. This is a really, really simple project to do and I love doing these type of wreath forms. You can display these anywhere in your house. They could look so beautiful strung up in front of a mirror, sitting on a shelf or even hanging up on a door if you wanted to. I just love the way this looks and this purple is so beautiful. I just, I think it's so pretty for spring. So go ahead and make sure you're fluffing as you go. If you notice any of those little flower heads popping off of their stems, just go ahead and glue them back on so that they stay in place. And then once you've got it all the way around and you tuck it underneath that first one and everything's all in place, you will have a finished form. Now this wreath form size, I 
think it's 10 inches wide. I think that's how big this one is. But again, they're both from the Dollar Tree and super affordable, way cheaper to make it yourself than buying it. So when you get to the end, just tie off the twine and then not glue it down into place so that you make sure that it doesn't come untwisted or unknotted over time. For the next part of this DIY, we're gonna take a book from the Dollar Tree and some twine. Now, I like to use old books or books from the Dollar Tree because then I don't feel as guilty when I rip them apart. I do love books, we love books in our home, so don't think that I'm just going around ripping up books. <laughs> I really do respect books. It's just this book, I'm never going to read it and it's just going to sit on the shelf at the Dollar Tree. So I decided to pick it up and I'm going to turn it into something beautiful to display in our home because I love text paper as decoration, especially for springtime. I think it's so pretty. So what I'm going to do is I just ripped out some of the pages that I need and this one book is going to last me for a long time with a lot of DIYs. I have some other plans for it in the future, so keep a hold of your book covers and all the extra papers I'm going to be using these a lot this spring season so take a couple papers scroll them up and then you're going to take some twine and then just tie a simple knot around it this is again a super easy DIY if you're a new crafter you don't have to feel overwhelmed by doing so many hard projects then you're going to take these scrolled up papers and you're just going to put them inside a dome I picked up this dome from Ikea I I think it was $10, but you can find these at the thrift store all the time. And then you're gonna put it on a cake stand and then put the wreath on it. It is the prettiest, most simple DIY. For our next DIY, we're gonna be using these supplies, this plunger stick, <laughs> painter sticks, and this sign from the Dollar Tree. This is the cutest DIY. It's a little advanced. I will say, if you're a new crafter, this not, might not be the one you wanna start with, but you're gonna start by taking your sign and cutting it down to size. Now, on this day, you're gonna laugh at me, and I know if you're a diehard crafter, you will know that sometimes you do things a little wonky because you can't find something, so you just kinda wing it, whatever. <laughs> I took my scissors, scored it first, and then I cut it and then snapped it. Now normally I would like to use my sharp like carpet cutting blade, but I could not find it this day. So here I am just winging it and going with it. So once you've got it cut down to size at 17 and a half inches long, you're then going to take your long painter sticks, measure them to the length that you need, and then cut them down to size. Now I'm going to also make Make sure that I cut two for the long sides and two for the short sides but I'm not going to give you the measurement for the short sides because sometimes Dollar Tree can cut things a little off and I don't want to give you the wrong measurement so just make sure that you hold your painter stick up to the sign and then mark off where you need to cut now for that painter stick rod that wood dowel you're going to go ahead and just cut off the rounded tip and it should hit at 17 inches long then once you've got all your pieces cut, you can go ahead and just make sure they fit properly around your sign. And then you're gonna glue it on the side where they butt up and then at the seam so that this makes it extra strong. Once you've got that first one on, you can start moving around the rest of the way. Make sure it's glued in place and really sturdy so that it can help support each other. And as you keep adding on another wall of this box, it gets stronger and stronger as you go. Now I would like to recommend, if you're gonna do this project, to use a staple gun. I'll link the one down below that I use all the time in my videos. I love it, I purchased it on Amazon, and it's really craft friendly. I like to have it in my craft room whenever I'm working on projects like this. So I'm just gonna simply take the staple gun and line it up and then just staple around the sides to make sure that it's strong at all those connecting points. Now it's really not gonna fall apart on you and this is gonna last for a really long time. Then I'm going to take a traditional size painter stick. I'm going to glue two of them together and I'm going to do that twice. This is going to become the handles for the box that we have. Now I'm going to be switching over to a drill bit so that I can drill holes. I like to pre-drill into painter sticks. The wood is not the strongest wood and sometimes it can split if you go through it with a screw. So I do recommend taking a drill, drilling down in. Now again, <laughs> doing things a little wild on this channel. I'm not gonna drill on a traditional drill table. <laughs> I'm doing it on my craft table. So I'm just lifting up as I go, before I go through my table. 
but again you should probably do this in your garage then I'm gonna just take a screw and screw them together on both sides so that you can see where the handles are and then before I staple them down I put some hot glue right on the sides to hold that into place to make it strong and then came back in and reinforced it with my staple gun on the inside of the box making sure that it's stapled down really well and it's not gonna come off and last for a really long time then to clean up the look because I love a finished backside I took my white paint I painted the bottom with two coats of white paint and then I also painted the inside of the box completely white so that it's a nice clean look on the inside of the box but the outside of the box I went ahead and did a whitewash all over the whole box now if you've never heard of whitewashing before it's super super simple you take a traditional white acrylic paint that you can get super cheap and you're gonna add some water to it to the consistency that you would like and then you just mix it together and then lightly brush it on wipe it off so with a dry towel wipe some more on wipe it off until you get that wood look that you would like now I want it to look a little more beaten up so I'm gonna add some black paint to that and I'm just gonna make a light gray color I'm going for a really old industrial looking painter garden box <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense but I just like to just keep adding stuff on and I also took some white paint at the end and just kind of splotched it on on certain parts so it looked kind of drippy then I'm going to move on to the garden pots for this DIY like I said this one is a little more intense for a DIYer but anyone can try it if you feel comfortable go for it I encourage you all to try new things but you're going to take your little terracotta pot so you can get from the Dollar Tree right now and you're going to put some Mod Podge around the base where that lip is and then you're going to take some paper now I love using dictionary paper on this particular type thing when it works with Mod Podge and paper just because it's um, more of a rice type paper and it just goes on these pots beautifully so go ahead and just put that paper all around it get it all sealed in real well and then the other half of my pots I'm going to take some white paint and I'm going to just dry brush all around I'm going to just very very lightly put on my paint and then just go around the pot and you can see how it's adding so much texture and depth and it's making them look a little more aged and distressed now we're going to take these florals and we're going to start assembling our floral box I cannot wait to show you all the finished look I think this is hands down my favorite DIY I have ever done here on my channel I cannot wait to display this in my home for this spring I'm going to be decorating with it in just another week so I cannot wait to show you all where I put it then we're going to take these terracotta pots that we just distressed and made them look real cute and we're going to take some of these foam squares now I will say that hot glue does not stick to these very well I do like the white foam squares better but I had the green ones on hand so that's what we're gonna work with then you're gonna take your flowers I like to cut them away from those stems like I said earlier and this time I did it and I'm just going to cut them down to the size I want and put them down inside there now a trick about these pots I like to boost them up by putting some foam inside of certain ones to make them look a little more wonky like they're stacked and filled with dirt and you're just going to start putting your flowers in and your pots wherever you'd like you're going to notice how i'm going to put a pot here on its side because i just think that looks so pretty as if it had fallen over in a garden shed and it just looks really nice and then just play with your florals putting in whatever you would like and i'm going to go with a lot of neutrals i'm going to go with cream and green and a little bit of a pop of yellow and a little pop of purple that are on these more succulent looking plants i don't know what they're called i'll, I'll link everything down below okay and then the Dollar Tree also had these super cute little flower garden tags so I'm gonna just paint on the word roses and I'm also going to paint a little sign that says one dollar because again I want it to look like you would see this at a garden shop or in a garden shed and I just think it's so cute something maybe even like you'd see at a farmers market
And the next craft that we're going to be doing is with this free printable that I designed for all of you to be able to grab. It's linked down below in my description box. Don't forget to grab it before you hop forward. We're going to be taking these printables and some scrapbook paper and some foam core and we're going to turn them into something really special that is just farmhouse chic. Go ahead and cut out your printable right at that cut line and once you've got all three of them cut out and ready to go, you're going to then take your foam core board and trace them onto that. Here are what the printables look like once they are all cut out and ready to go. So now I'm going to just take that printable, flip it over so it's the backside facing up, and I'm going to just trace on four squares. Now you're going to see that I actually did five, but I decided to go back later on and trace the fifth square once the square was built. So you're going to see in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and cut them all out so that I have these four different pieces and again you're seeing me cut the fifth piece but I'm going to cut them all out and once everything has been exacto knifed I can start assembling my box. We're going to be creating three stacking tier boxes which I just think are the coolest thing ever and a really fun way to get a dramatic height when it comes to decor in your home. We're going to just start putting all of those pieces together. I like to make sure that my pieces all interlock into each other. So I'm hoping this makes sense. On one of the pieces you stick it on the side and then you move over to the other side and you put it on the inner part. That way so all of the pieces are kind of folding into each other. I don't know if that makes sense. So you're going to see it here where I put it on the side and on the top and then I'm kind of wedging them into each other that way so they're nice and secure. And then I'm going back in with some hot glue on the inside of the box and taking a popsicle stick and smushing it all around in there so it's really nice and sturdy. Now see here's where I'm deciding to go back and cut that fifth piece again. I'm going to make sure I put the box down and then cut it because I noticed that there was a little bit of a shorted lip on the sides and I wanted to make sure that it was a full complete covered top. So once I've got that piece, I went ahead and glued it on and I was ready to start decorating this box. Now keep in mind I didn't put anything on the bottom because you want to be able to stack these away when the season is done or you can keep them out year round. So I decided to not put anything on the bottom of them so they store nicely and you don't have these big bulky things that you try to store in the future. Then you're going to take some Mod Podge and you're just going to put that right over your box and put on your printable, move around to the other side, put on some scrapbook paper, just make sure everything is nice and snug on there. And then this is the quickest way I decided to do it was I cut it after I already put it on the box and then I just Mod Podge it. So now you're going to see that I'm going to move on to the next side. I'm going to add some more of that wonderful glue that I love to use so much in a lot of my videos and then I'm going to add on the scrapbook paper and then I'm going to put it down on the cutting mat and cut it once it's already on there that way so I don't have any wonky cuts and it's perfectly cut to the box. These papers were all from Hobby Lobby and they were on sale. You can get really great deals for scrapbook papers there and they have some really pretty farmhouse papers. Once you've got those papers all on, everything is Mod Podge and sealed, you're going to take some black and white paint and create kind of like an ombre effect. You don't want it to be super black or super gray or super white. You want it to look old and distressed and weathered. So I'm just kind of going in and just mixing on some paint and then I'm going to take a paintbrush and add on some little streaks here and there with the brown and dry brush on some brown in the middle and just keep playing with it until it looks weathered and distressed. I think that this looks super, super beautiful on a bookshelf somewhere or maybe a side table. I just think these look so cute and they give you that really big height and especially when you pair them next to some florals and some other greenery, it looks so pretty. So again, just keep playing with your paint. Have fun with it. This is something that I don't think that is easy to mess up. And you just keep blotting away what you don't like and keep adding more where you do. So now here I'm going to show you where they can all stack inside of each other with the three different sizes that we're going to be making today. The template works from the printable. Just trace that out for each of your boxes and you're good to go. 
Thanks so much for stopping by to visit with me today. Don't forget to leave a comment down below to let me know what you all think of my projects for today. Thanks so much for stopping by and until the next episode, bye friends.